Hi everyone, my name is Mahir Badrake. I am a geotechnical engineer from WSP Golder. Today I will present my paper, which is a comparison between new maritime history analysis and finite limit method for estimating seismically induced slope displacement. My goal in this presentation is to find the Einstein threshold of optimum simplicity. In other words, I don't want to make it too complex and in this case, I might waste your time by presenting too much information. And at the same time, I don't want, want to make it too simple by not focusing on the most critical information. The table of contents of this presentation, first I will give a brief introduction, then I will show you the properties and the geometry of the model that we used in this analysis. And then I will talk about the develop, development of the earthquake acceleration time history that we that we that we that we used in the slammer analysis and the finite limit analysis. Then I will compare all the results together. Then I will wrap up with the summary and conclusion. The authors of the paper are myself as a first author and Dr. Feng Li and Dr. Christian Armstrong, all from WSP Golder. In this paper, we used three different methods to estimate the seismic deformation of slope. First, we used simple deformation analysis. In this method, we performed static stability analysis using Slide 2 software, which is a software that uses limited equilibrium to estimate the factor of safety. After that, we conducted pseudo-static seismic analysis in Slide 2 as well to estimate the yield acceleration. Then we used Bray and Macedo's 2019 empirical equations to estimate the displacement at the crest of the slope. This method is a function of yield acceleration, moment magnitude of earthquake acceleration time history, and fundamental period of the falling mass. The second method that we used in this paper, we used SLAMR code to estimate the seismic deformation. SLAMR stands for Seismic Landslide Movement modeled using earthquake records. This code is available for free in USGS website. You can just basically, the user can download it and start using it. Or you can also, uh, you can find it in Slide 2 software actually. So uh, SLAMR code is a built-in code inside Slide 2 software. If you have Slide 2, you will have automatically slammer inside it as a built-in code so you can use it to estimate the deformation based on actual earthquake acceleration time history so the main difference between slammer and total static in slammer you can use actually the acceleration time history instead of just the bga or the moment magnitude as we do in the simplified approach like bray and Massive 2019. so the main principle of the new mark time history or slammer analysis is that during an earthquake, there will be a short moment in time when the inertial forces plus the initial static forces will exceed the available shear resistance, resulting in temporary loss of stability and unrecoverable deformation. These unrecoverable deformation will then result in permanent deformation at the conclusion of the seismic events. For the present study, the new mark time history analysis was performed as well uh, inside, uh, inside slide 2 software. The third method we used stress deformation analysis using finite limit method. We used in this case RS2 software from Rock Science to estimate the seismic deformation. Then the results were compared uh, to each other for all three different methods. In this slide here, I'm showing the uh, geometric, the geometry of the model that we use in the finite element analysis. We also, we also here showing the uh, finite element mesh. On the right side of the slides, uh, um, I'm showing the property of the material that we used in the finite element analysis. For the, for the finite element deformation analysis and for the slammer analysis, we developed 10 single component earthquake acceleration time history for the target site-specific response spectrum. The earthquake acceleration time history were developed using, using amplitude scaling method based on ASCE 716. 
The seat earthquake actuation were selected from Peer NGA West 2 website. This table actually on the bottom of the slide here shows the properties of all the motion used in the slammer analysis and also in the finite element analysis. The deformation, uh, this table actually shows all the deformation from all methods. The first four columns is the deformation uh, from the finite element using all 10 motions, different motions. So point A, which is at the crest of the slope, point B at the toe of the slope. And then the, this column shows the deformation at the slammer from slammer, whoops, uh, slammer code. And then the last column shows the deformation from Bray and Macedo's empirical equations. You can see you can, uh, that the deformation calculated using slammer and Bray Macedo's are smaller than those estimated by finite element modeling. The results from three methods that were used in this paper were compared to acceptable deformation criteria from literature, Howley and Koning 2017. These results from all methods used in this paper indicate that the performance of the analyzed waste dump slope meets the acceptable deformation based on Howley and Koning 2017. So in conclusion, Three methods, three methods were used to estimate the deformation of slope. These methods are the empirical equations, Bray and Macedo's, 2019, Slammer code, and finite element analysis. The deformation calculated from Slammer and Bray Macedo's are smaller than those estimated by finite element models. So there might be cases for which the simplified method and the new mark time history method results in acceptable small permanent displacement, whereas the finite element methods result in permanent displacement greater than accepted acceptance criterion. For these cases, we may reach different conclusion without doing the more expensive and time-consuming finite element analysis. We therefore recommend building a pool of case studies and developing methods dependent performance criteria. For example, if the pool of the case studies shows that the simplified methods more likely results in smaller displacement, maybe the performance of the criteria for the simplified methods need to be more stringent than those for the finite element methods. This pool of case studies should be based on results from set of phase dump slopes using a range of earthquake records. So, slammer and, and the, uh, the simplified uh, Baker equations are good to estimate the deformation, and they are also good uh, as, as screening, screening tools for engineers to see uh, and check the, the deformation of the slope very quickly and very fast if you have the actuation time history. And then if there is some uh, values that are like high, then we can go to more advanced and more expensive uh, tool like finite element or finite uh, uh, difference, for example, to, to more investigate the deformation of the slope. Thank you so much, and I hope I provide some value with this uh, technical paper. Thank you.